Good morning everyone. My name is Linda and I'm part of the Church Fellowship here at St Jude's. And this morning we continue in our short series from Ephesians on the Armour of God. For the Ephesians, life was more terrifying for them than us. They believed implicitly in evil spirits. The whole universe was a battleground. The Christian not only had to contend with attacks from men, but also attacks of the spiritual forces that were fighting against God. The armour of the Roman soldier suggests a picture that the Christian too has his armour. Part by part, Paul takes the soldier's armour and translates it into Christian terms. And he isn't just coming up with these out of thin air. He knows his Old Testament and each piece of armour is found there in the Old Testament, mainly in Isaiah. Now John spoke to us last week about the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. Now we come to the feet, fitted or shod, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The sandals the Roman soldier wore were made of leather, laced around the ankle and part way up the calf. It was important to have very heavy soles, as one of the defensive weapons that they used in warfare were sticks that had sharpened points. These were then buried in the ground, pointing upwards and barely visible. And if you stepped on one, you would more than likely be disabled. The sandals too were also fitted with spikes, a bit like golf shoes, as the soldiers battled in all kinds of terrain, in all kinds of weather and at all times of the day. And it was these spikes that enabled the soldier to remain on his feet, to stand firm. And a soldier on his feet has a great advantage over a soldier on the ground. And for us as Christians, we are told to have our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. As I cross-reference this scripture, I was led to Isaiah 52, 7, which says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Now this may have been in Paul's mind, but the context would seem to indicate that we are talking about different things. This is the spreading of the gospel in Isaiah, which I will refer to later. But in Ephesians, it is about being prepared, the readiness with the gospel of peace. Therefore, we need to be crystal clear what this gospel of peace is. So I'm going to start from the beginning. Everything is created and begins with God. He gives life, breath and everything else to everyone. Acts 17 verse 28 says, In him we live and move and have our being. And from one human being, Adam, God created all races on earth. Psalm 139 says to us, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. But there is a problem. We chose and we choose now to go our own way instead of God's way. And that cuts us off from God. We're, we spiritually die. We may openly disobey God 
or simply ignore him. And it's this self-centred attitude that the Bible calls sin. And we're all the same. Romans 3 tells us all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But, I love God's buts and this but is the greatest news ever. God loves us. No matter what we've done, no matter what we're like, God loves us and is looking for us. 1 John chapter 4 says, God showed his love for us by sending his son into the world so that we might have life through him. Jesus, God's son, is unique. And in John's gospel chapter 14, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Without me, no one can go to the Father. Jesus has the power to put things right. Colossians 1 says, While we were sinners, Christ reconciled us to God by dying for us. So, Jesus also has the power over death. As three days after he died, he rose to life. Acts 1.3 says, for 40 days after Jesus had suffered and died, he proved many ways that he had been raised from death. He appeared to his apostles and spoke to them about God's kingdom. Then ascended, went back to heaven where he came from, and he is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And because of this, we are forgiven. We have life forever. Romans 6 says, Now, because of Jesus, we are free from sin and belong to God. This brings us a life that is only for God. And this gives us life forever. This is a free gift. You can't buy it and you can't earn it. Those who turn to God and believe and trust in what Jesus has done are made new. So we've now come full circle. We are now recreated. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, If anyone belongs to Christ, there begins a new creation. The old things have gone. Everything is made new. All this is from God through Christ. God made peace between us and himself. And this is the gospel of peace, the good news of Jesus. The devil fears and hates this and will do everything to cause us to slip and stumble, to doubt and to question this gospel of peace. So here are a few of God's promises, God's assurance to us, to what has happened when we have put our belief and trust in him. Jesus comes to us in our life by his spirit and he will never leave us. Hebrews says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. We have been forgiven completely. Colossians 2 says he forgave all our sins. We have a new power in our life. 1 John 4 says we know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we can begin to experience life with God as he intended. John 10.10 10 says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Ray Altland in his commentary says, the message is that God's grace has already won the victory over everything that oppresses us. 
He loves us with a love that cannot be defeated, even by our own stupidity. There is no end to the impact of the gospel. It is the only cause in the world that will finally succeed. So, having prepared ourselves and having been assured with this gospel of peace, having a firm foothold, we now need to have a plan to share it, proclaiming Jesus Christ as peacemaker. We need to be those beautiful feet, as mentioned in Isaiah, of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace and salvation, and who say, our God reigns. Have we possibly become complacent and lost sight of just how amazing this gospel of peace really is? We have been entrusted with it. And it's the best news for everyone, for the hopeless, the desperate, the isolated, the estranged, as well as those whose lives may be, well, very hunky-dory at the moment, and where adversity is not even in their vocabulary. And we only have to see from the past two years with Covid, and now with Russia's warring inhumane assault on the sovereign and peaceable nation of Ukraine, just how fragile life can be, and how in the blinking of an eye, how things can change. During Lent here at St Jude's, we are being encouraged to have our five a day, to spend five minutes more a day reading our Bible, observing what it's saying to us, applying it, praying through it and sharing it. Also, we're being asked to pray for five people who we know, who do not know, have not heard or responded to this gospel of peace, and then for opportunities to share it with them and that they will respond to all that God has done for them through Jesus. And I hope that you too will be encouraged to take this on board. Are we ready to stand firm? God is looking for a people that will stand and remain standing in the day of the battle. And that's every day. And as part of our readiness, we need to be fully aware of the wiles of the devil. The Bible tells us he's crafty, he's cunning, he's a liar and he's a thief. And he comes like a roaring lion. John Stott, who was a rare combination of evangelist, pastor, administrator and a Bible teacher says this. The devil fears and hates the gospel because it's God's power to rescue people from his tyranny. Both us who have received it and those for whom we share it. So we need to keep our sandals firmly strapped on. And if we are ready to stand firm, we need to be prepared to know what God has done for us through his son Jesus and be willing to be true to our faith without adding or subtracting from it in order to make it easier or harder for people to accept. We live in a world that is constantly changing but in the Bible we are told that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. So we need to continually find ways of communicating our faith that is relevant to where people are at. So as I conclude, may we truly be a people at peace with God. If you do not have 
or are unsure or would like to have peace with God, then please speak to someone. And if there's no one that, there for you to speak with, then do get in touch with us, with us here at St Jude's. May we truly have peace with one another, living peaceably with everyone. And may we be a people who are strong in the Lord and in his mighty power by putting on the full armour that God has provided and equipped us with, enabling us to stand firm against the devil's schemes to the glory of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>